Welcome back to the Webby and O'Neill channel. Manchester United 4, Real Betis 1. And now, Kieran, what do you make of that game? Well, it was a good bounce back after that shocking embarrassment of uh, a result last weekend. It wasn't like an expectation. It was a more of a demand from fans to put in a performance and bounce back tonight. And I think the players overall handled it very well. You know, in the first half, you know, in the midfield area, they did have their moments, Real Betis. But we also had ours. And, you know, you look at David De Gea in that first half as well. Like we said earlier on, it was like he was playing football with Casper de Gaulle at times. I think some of them balls he put out ended up in the net on the roof of Overtel football. But I think that was the only scares that we had, really, in that first half. I think overall, you know, bouncing back from that result over the weekend, we'd done fairly well in that first half. In the first half, it wasn't as flu fluent, the football. But at half time, Ten Hag got older. Him. Did you see the change in the mentality, the way they went at him? What was it? Was it more? We're having this. We need to get a result. Yeah, of course. I think there would have been some words at half time, but I don't think they would have been too strong. If you know what I mean, I think it would have been more just keep going as you are doing, keep playing, keep passing the ball about, and you know you will create chances because they did look a bit dodgy at the back. Real Betis, they didn't look as tight as a as I thought they would be. We did have our opportunities. But with you saying about the midfield, it you know, it does show you, and you have seen glimpses of it over the last few weeks, how much we do miss Christian Eriksen. Because Christian Eriksen does bring that calmness to yeah. the midfield. And, you know, don't get me wrong, you're not always going to have full possession for 90 minutes in a game. You are going to get the opposition having chances, but Eriksen does give you that calmness in midfield where he can dictate the play, dictate the tempo. And we do miss that, I think. But Fred and Casemiro, they're doing well. And, you know, since the start of February, I think we've been playing three and a half, four games, you know, since the start of uh, January, sorry. So, overall, the team are doing very well. Four goals. Could it have been more? It should have been more, but I'm I'm happy with four, you know, to well, four one in your first leg of Europa League to take over to Spain, you know, let's have it right. I've got the feeling that we're through and we should go through. I don't think Ten Hag will take it lightly himself. I feel, still think he'll put a strong team out, near enough probably the same team that started tonight. But I, I do expect us to go through. I spoke earlier on, I said Bruno had an excellent game. Well, I've listened to Ten Hag and Ten Hag says he was superb tonight. After Sunday, yeah. coming back with that performance, captain's performance? Oh, without a doubt. It was big pressure on Bruno tonight, to be honest with you. A lot made in the media. We've discussed it and a lot of his out there have discussed it as well. You know, should he have the armband? Should it be stripped from him? Should it be given to someone else? But I also think with Bruno, and we mentioned it in our match preview, with him playing out on the left, not his best position to go and play Bruno. I, I think Bruno's more suited where he can have that freedom to you know, roam around the pitch. And if the play is being put down the left-hand side, he can float over there, but he's not rigid to stick over to that side with that duty to help out with the left-back and get forward. And I think Bruno tonight, he was more in that number eight role alongside Fred with Casemiro sitting back. And I thought he played really well. My man of the match. Yeah. Ten Hag. Likes to play his strongest side. Doesn't really get to change that start in 11. Yeah. But then he brought on wan Bazaka, which I said earlier on, I thought mm -hmm. he should have started. But there's one change I think should be made, and that's Anthony. Because when Palestri come on, the performance he put on, the cameo he put on, surely he deserves a start. Do you know something? I think it was the last time I seen him, was it Nottingham Forest away? And he put in a... A similar performance and even performances that we have seen before that, you know, the glimpses that we've seen, we all can see there's something there with this kid. And yeah, I'm a little bit baffled why he's not got more game time, especially when Sancho was out for as long as he was as well. And, you know, I thought, you know, this kid looks like a duck to water. He, you know, he's so composed. He wants to run at defenders. He wants to create things. And sometimes with Anthony, it's just his overall performance in the game for me. Um, his passing, his decision making. You know, we all talk about him not having a right foot, and I do think that needs to be worked on. But he's still a very, very young lad, and you can see the talent and the potentials there with Anthony. And I do think he will come good. Sancho came on. I thought he played well. He had lots of space. Gave the ball. Uh, the full back was changed. Shaw came yeah. off. You know, there was lots of changes there. To be but honest with you, sorry to put in. I think Sancho should be worried though with uh, Palestra. 
I think with Palestra, when you've seen him with these cameos, it shows you really like the strength and depth that we have got in the wide areas in this current squad. And if I was Palestra, you know, we've got a few games still to play towards the end of the season. If we're still in the cup games as well, going to the finals, I'd expect Palestra to get more game time. And if he does perform, you know, Sancho's going to have to have uh, words with himself to step it up in training and when he does get minutes. We've got a three goal lead <coughs> going over to Spain. We've got Southampton coming up on Sunday. Mm. Are you expecting some tweaks, some changes, or do you think Ten Hag will stick with that start in 11 again? Against Southampton? Southampton and going know, away. Do you know something I said to you, was it yesterday or, or, or today, that out of the two games against Real Betis and Southampton, I see the Southampton one being the hardest game. Because I think Southampton, yeah. they need the points. Uh, they got a, a good win last weekend. And I just think to myself, the energy that they do have. And you've seen tonight with Luke Shaw. To me, Luke Shaw tonight looked a bit leggy. He did do against Liverpool and Ten Hag did bring him off tonight. And I, I do think his legs need saving, Luke Shaw. It's been a tough old season, like we said before. He's, he started Ten Hag near enough the same team each week since we've come back from the World Cup and it will take its toll on some of the players and I think Luke Shaw might be one of them. Um, so, yeah, I do think he will go with his strongest 11 and I think it probably will be the team that um, started tonight, barring Delo. I think Juan Bissaka deserves his chance. Yeah, well, well that's that's my opinion. And a yeah. lot of you out there have commented Juan Bissaka deserves a chance and should be starting now. Now, looking at this competition, I was never sure yeah. about going further in it, right? But the way United have bounced back, how confident are you that we can add another trophy to the cabinet? Oh, you've got to be confident, aren't you? you especially how we've bounced back tonight. Yeah, it went pretty at times. You know, they, they did have their moments. But Did the weather help? Yeah, well, the weather's absolutely freezing now, isn't it? Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. But we're used to it. We're Manx, yeah. you know, it's an everyday occurrence. But, you know, with this competition... I do expect us to go far. You look at the rest of the teams in, in it there. I think Juventus, has, well, Juventus got a win tonight. I think it was 1-0. Arsenal 2-2. Sevilla are always the ones for me that you look out for and you think they're going to be there or thereabouts, the semis or the finals. And yeah. We've seen them over the last couple of times we've played in the Europa League. You know, they've done us in the final and they've done us previously. I think it was in the semis or the quarters before that. So they're going to be tough to beat. But under this manager, the way we've been playing, the way this group looks like it's got back together, you know, why shouldn't we expect another final? Last question. Is Casemiro's fitness the key for United staying in contention here for the two Cups and staying in that top four? Is it key? Because to me, Liverpool, he looked leggy. Tonight, at times, he looked a little bit yeah. leggy. Played well, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But is he, due, is he due a rest? Because... He's been fantastic for us. Yeah, I, I, like, like you just said there, and I do agree, he is due a rest, but I don't think we can afford to rest him because <laughs> the squad, the depth's just not good enough. Um, you know, you look at Fred there, Scott McTominay, I fully expect it. You know, he's a great lad, Scott McTominay, and he has put in performances over the years for Manchester United, but I ex expect Scott McTominay to leave Manchester United in the summer because I just don't think he can rise to that next level that we need in that centre midfield area. But yeah, going back onto Casemiro, I think you've just got to keep playing him. Hopefully the, the way the training, Hopefully. you know, the food, the sleeping, all that stuff, you know, it's all bang on. So he can just get a rest, recuperate and go again for the next game like we have been doing. But, you know, it won't surprise you if he does start to fade towards the end of the season, like most of them. But at the end of the day, right now, they look like they're up for it. They're all going for it. So you've got to be happy with it. A smile on your face. Well, listen, we've got a smile on our face. I hope you have. So smash that like button, get your comments in and we'll go to the final according to Kieran. And I think we've got a great chance with one hand on it. Listen, get your comments in, smash the likes. Thank you. Hopefully you're buying the flights in the hotel. Ooh. <laughs>